Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reedsy. I'm here today with another video, and in today's video, I'm just going to be sharing with you eight ways to write better. This whole channel is dedicated to various writing tips and writing craft topics that you can learn and implement into your work. Today, I just kind of want to give you the rundown of eight tips that can help make your writing better. These are all pretty simple, pretty straightforward. In my opinion, these are like the eight core things. If you implement them, you will improve the technical craft aspect of your work. Step number one is to cut filters. This is a really easy change to implement. Once you learn how to do it, it'll really make your writing much smoother. So a filter is a form of telling, and it's basically a construction that separates the reader from the narrator. So for example, she saw sunlight shining through the window. We could also have this appear in first person, I saw sunlight streaming through the window. In this case, she saw is a filter. It reminds us that there's a separation between character and narrator, which typically we don't want. You could rephrase this sentence as just sunlight streamed through the window. If we're rooted in a character's point of view, anything we see is in their point of view, so we don't need to be reminded. This also applies to thoughts, for example, she decided she would walk home now. Could just be, she would walk home now. We can see that she's making the decision to walk home, so we don't need to be told that she's deciding. Step number two, use concrete language. Concrete words are words that can be perceived with our senses. So these are objects with a physical form, things we can smell, things we can hear, as opposed to abstract words, which are things we cannot perceive with the senses. So these are things like concepts, ideas, emotions. Some concrete words are things like tree, desk. Some abstract words are things like freedom, sadness. With concrete words, we know what to picture when we hear it. A concrete word could be door. When I say door, everyone's gonna picture a door. And of course we could add more concrete modifiers in order to make that description more specific. If I say loneliness, sure we know what it means, but we don't all picture the same thing because we have different connotations and loneliness as a word doesn't have a physical form. In your descriptions especially, try to use concrete words rather than abstract words. So if you say, you know, the flowers were the color of joy, sure, we can kind of interpret what that means, but joy isn't a color. Um, so instead you would want to use something concrete, like the flowers were magenta and yellow. That's something we can all see and everyone's going to see the same thing. Next up is to use stronger verbs. A lot of the time we're told to cut adverbs, but I think the better way to think of this is to just use stronger verbs. Sometimes a verb, it just stands on its own, it doesn't even have an adverb, but you can punch it up. Verbs are the life of a sentence, they're the movement. I think that in a lot of cases they're the most important word in a sentence, and you can liven up your verbs, lift them up a little bit, you can make the prose so much more interesting. So in an earlier example I said sunlight streamed through the window. That's a fairly familiar verb, so maybe we want to punch up that verb a little. We could say sunlight pierced through the window. That's not something you hear every day. You know, a fairly common sentence, I guess I'm also using sunlight for this one, sunlight filtered through the leaves. How about something like sunlight laced through the leaves? Using more interesting verbs can really add a lot of life to your prose and can make your writing feel more original. A lot of verbs are just very familiar, like, you know, the stars twinkled. That's usually what the stars are doing when we read about the stars. So try something else. Maybe the stars could flicker or something like that. Next up is to cut weasel words. So weasel words are basically words that appear in a sentence but don't actually contribute to the meaning of a sentence. So for example, she just wanted to go home. Could be she wanted to go home. That just adds a little bit of emphasis and there are certainly cases where you want to use a word like this. But for the most part, you want to cut them. They just add extra unnecessary fluff to a sentence. And the general rule with prose is that if you have fewer words, the words you have have more impact. A lot of weasel words can make the writing feel very sticky and hard to read. You want to edit for economy and cut extraneous words. That, just, and only are some of the most common weasel words, but also ly adverbs. Like apparently, actually, possibly, probably. Most words with some, like some, somewhat, something, sometime, someday, are weasel words. As well as, you know, vague quantifiers like a bit, or fairly, or likely. I think it's very common for writers to 
justify weasel words and say no, but it does make sense in this sentence. I do need the weasel word. It does impact the meaning, but once you get into the habit of cutting them, you can kind of see how much stronger your prose can be without all those unnecessary words. The next tip is to slide out of the past perfect. So the past perfect is a verb tense um, that uses had constructions. So she had woken up at seven this morning. Typically the past perfect is used when we're writing in past tense and then we jump further back. So it's often used to signify the start of a flashback. And the thing is, it is a grammatically correct thing to do. Had is kind of a weasel word. It's not a very fun word to read over and over. It can create a really awkward sentence rhythm. So a really good technique if you're jumping into a flashback is to write the first sentence or two sentences in the past perfect and then segue into simple past. So for example, she had woken up at seven this morning and had made coffee for herself and her sister. She checked the mail and walked to the bus. So the first sentence we used the past perfect and then we kind of just slid into simple past. It's so much cleaner to read. This is a really easy technique, but it can make your flashbacks much cleaner to read. Step six is to avoid unnecessary passive voice. Now this is pretty common advice, but it's pretty important advice. We've got an entire video on passive voice. It is important to know there are cases where the passive voice is completely fine to use, but there are other cases where it just reads very sluggishly. Places where you can use the passive voice are when you don't actually know the subject. So for example, the tree was planted 50 years ago. This isn't passive voice, but it's a completely fine sentence because in order to make it active, we would have to introduce a subject, something like a farmer planted the tree 50 years ago. If we don't know who the subject is or the subject is irrelevant, you can use passive voice. But a really weak use of passive voice would be a sentence like, the tree had been planted by a farmer 50 years ago. As you can hear, it's much cleaner to just say, a farmer planted the tree 50 years ago, or the tree was planted 50 years ago. So look out for unnecessary passive voice. It really does slow down and weigh down your prose, which is why it's such common advice, but also such good advice to cut it. The next tip is to use more specific imagery. In my opinion, if I had one piece of advice for writers who want to learn how to write more interesting description, I would tell them to make their writing more specific. Look for more interesting, specific details and integrate them into your prose. And you don't need to use any kind of fanciful language or flowery, pretty prose in order to make the writing interesting. Ask yourself how you can be more specific. If you're describing a tree, what type of tree is it? If there's a stack of books, what type of books are there? If a side character mentions she just got a new job, what job is it? Make it specific, make it interesting. Um, you can start to find these in your life and just keep a list of them. I literally have a note on my phone called details to use where I just write specific details. Using more specific details rather than vague details is probably the number one way, in my opinion, to write stronger description and more interesting description. And once you start doing it, you'll notice a huge difference. We have an entire video on specificity, so I'll leave a link to that if you'd like to see some more examples and some specific ways some specific ways to be more specific. And my final tip is to prioritize writing clearly. A very common mistake uh, for writers who want to improve their craft is to focus on the complexity of their prose. But what you really want to focus on is the clarity. Good writing is only as good as it is clear. If you have a really complicated sentence structure with, you know, a ton of fancy obscure words that you, you know, looked for in a thesaurus, but it doesn't make sense, then the writing will be very strong. Strong writing is clear first and foremost. If it's not clear, it can't really accomplish anything else. You know, what are a bunch of pretty words if you don't understand what they mean? So if you want to improve the quality of your prose, focus first and foremost on clarity. This doesn't mean that you can't have a more fanciful style. I myself have a bit of a fanciful prose style. My more fanciful prose style was often my downfall and often my Achilles heel until I learned to prioritize clarity. Once I learned to prioritize clarity, then those sentences actually gathered meaning and they could be so much more effective. I started doing what I call a clarity draft because I'm really bad at clarity. It's like one of my Achilles heels as a writer where sentences just don't make sense and I don't notice that they don't make sense until people read them and they're like, this doesn't make sense. I started doing a clarity read where an entire draft where I would read it over and if, I'm, if it doesn't make sense, I either make it make sense or get rid of it. 
So focus on clarity. It should probably be your number one priority over complexity, over originality, over weirdness. Clarity first. If you can write clearly, you have an amazing foundation to go on and develop your writing style. So those are eight tips for writing better. I think these are all really foundational things, really easy to apply, and if you can apply these things, you will be well on your way to really strong writing and really strong prose. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.